All right, welcome to Unit 2, the Introduction to Titrations. This is in the Aqueous Reactions Unit. Um, make sure to read the targets that are going to be covered in this little section um, because you'll need to know some new vocabulary and some new calculations. So make sure to read over the first parts. Um, a titration is essentially a laboratory skill where you're using two chemicals and the proportions of the chemicals um, where you know the concentration of one but not the other to figure out the unknown's concentration. The whole point of a titration is to essentially reach what's known as the equivalence point because when you do a titration, um, at the equivalence point you should reach a point where the moles of one substance are equal to the moles of the second substance. In a lot of cases, that's an acid and a base. The moles of acid are equal to the moles of base. Or it could also be a redox reaction. So a few things of vocabulary. Understand what the equivalence point is. Most of the time, we can't measure the equivalence point because it uh, changes so quickly away from the equivalence point. So we have to use an indicator, which is typically some kind of a color change that tells us that we are at or near the equivalence point. We use an indicator to tell us the end point of the reaction. So the equivalence point and the end point are a little bit different. The end point is where we get the color change and it tells us we can stop adding our titrant. But the equivalence point is where you really truly have equal number of moles of acid and base or reactants and products. The burette, um, I will show you in class, it's a, basically a, a giant pipette looking device. It's extremely precise and costs quite a bit of money, so don't break it please. And then a pipette, um, which we will use for a couple of labs but not many, is a, another volumetric device. It's extremely precise and used usually to measure very small amounts of liquid. One of the reasons for doing titration is standardization. And that is, uh, if you have, um, for instance, if I took a, a, cabinet, a chemical off the cabinet in the stock room and I didn't know its concentration, I could do a standardization titration to figure out what that concentration was. Um, and that's pretty much that. Ah, I think, I think I left something off here. The standard solution is the one who you know the concentration are you trying to find the concentration of? How did I leave that off? Little brackets mean concentration. Okay, so our first example problem is exercise 18 in our notes packet. Vinegar with acetic acid here is acetic acid. Determine the mass of acetic acid in a vinegar sample by titrating it with sodium hydroxide of a known concentration. So the first thing we need is a balanced equation. So acetic acid in either form is okay, either this form or the CH3COOH, plus sodium hydroxide. We have a double replacement reaction or a neutralization. The hydrogen pairs up with the OH to make water, and then we have sodium acetate. We do have to make sure this is a balanced equation because the titration is just one form of a stoichiometry problem. Okay, now that you have the equation, let's take a, a gander at the information at the bottom. We have a 25 milliliter sample of vinegar, so I'm going to call that the volume of the acid. Requires 28.33 mils of 0.953 molar sodium hydroxide. So that gives me the volume of the base. And it also gives me the concentration of the base. All right. 
I'm going to use what I know most, the things that I um, have the volume and the molarity for, to start off my problem. So I have 0 0.953 moles per liter of NaOH, and I have 28.33 milliliters, which I need to turn into liters. That's moving the decimal back three spots or dividing by 1,000. So that gives me 0 0.02833 liters. Now if it bothers you to leave a hole here, just always start with the volumes. Kind of like I was mentioning for creating the solutions. Start with the volume, then do the molarity, and then you don't have to worry about this little hole being in here. All right. So now the liters have canceled out and we're left with the unit of moles of NaOH. Now I need to switch to my new substance, so I need a mole ratio. From my equation, I have one mole of NaOH and one mole of acetic acid. And then finally, it, the question originally asks us what is the mass of, or how many grams, of acetic acid? So now I need molar mass. All right, the molar mass of acetic acid, adding everything up, 60.06 .06 grams. I want to make sure all my units are okay. Moles of NaOH on top and on the bottom. Moles of acetic acid on the top and on the bottom which would leave me with grams of acetic acid. So I multiply through 0.953 times 0.02833 times 60.06. .06. And I end up with 1.62 grams of acetic acid. All right, that's the first part of the question. And then the last part of the question asks, what is the molar concentration of the acetic acid in the vinegar? So for me to do that, I actually have to kind of go backwards. I'm getting another piece of paper down here on the bottom so we can see it. So that's part A. Part B, I'm going to take my 1.62 grams of acetic acid. Then I'm going to go back to the moles because I want mole, molar concentration, so that's moles per liter. So divide by 60.06 .06 grams times one mole. And then that's going to give me the number of moles. So let me divide those out real quick. That gives me 0 0.02 six, nine, seven, three moles. And then I know from the um, sample that it was a 25 milliliter sample. So I want moles per liter. I now need to divide by the volume. So 25 milliliters divided by 1,000 milliliters is 0 0.025 liters. And then I can divide those two values and I get 1.0789 molar and with sig figs that should then give me, it looks like I've got four sig figs everywhere, so 1.079 molar acetic acid. On to exercise 19, still doing titration here. Hydrochloric acid can be purchased from a chemical supply house in any solutions that are exactly 0.1 molar. So then we want to use that to standardize the solution of a base so we know exactly how concentrated it is. If you titrate to the equivalence point, that's what this means, EQPT, equivalence point, 25 milliliters of a calcium hydroxide solution with this volume of the acid solution, what is the concentration of the base? So very first step that we need to do, we need an equation. 
In this case, we're titrating hydrochloric acid and calcium hydroxide. Calcium is a group two metal, so it's going to require two hydroxides. It's still a neutralization reaction, so H and OH make water. And then we have calcium chloride. Make sure you watch out that you get your calcium is the plus two and your chloride is the minus one, so you need two of them. Now we need to balance this equation. We've got two CLs over here, but only one on the left. So I'm going to put two in front of that, which is going to give me two and then two here, so four H's. So I need to put a two in front of the water. And then it's balanced. Okay, I'm again going to start off with, as far as the stoichiometry goes, with the substance I know the most about, which is going to be the HCl in this case. Again, it's useful to start off with volume times molarity because that gives you um, a, a place to really easily see where you can get to the moles. So 32.56 milliliters, divide that by 1,000, and that gives you 0 0.03256 liters, and that's going to be my actual starting point. So 0 0.03256 liters of HCl. Next, multiply it by the molarity. We know that this particular batch is 1.100 moles per liter. Make sure you're not writing the capital M there. It'll trip you up later. Next, we're in moles of HCl, so now we need to switch. Go to my equation. I'm going between the HCl and the calcium hydroxide. So on the floor of my closet are the old clothes, old unit on the bottom, and my new clothes, my new unit, are hanging up on the top. And it asks us, in this case, for the concentration of the base. So I was trying to decide whether or not I needed to go any further to get grams. But I don't. I just need moles because I need, in the end, I need moles per liter. So if I multiply those values, 0 0.03256 times 0 0.1 divided by 2 gives me 0 0.001628 moles, and then back up in the question, it's telling us we used 25 milliliters of the calcium hydroxide. So 25 divided by 1,000 is 0 0.025 liters. You can divide those values. And I got point 0.06512 molar, and with sig figs, looks like 3 it is since we had 0 0.100 molar, so that is the molarity of my calcium hydroxide.